show or hearing from a panel of experts about an issue that impacts our community, trying out new local foods or exploring hidden treasures in our region, there's always something going on at WHYY. Check out our calendar of upcoming events and reserve your tickets right now. Visit whyy.org slash events. The U.S. Department of Education is investigating female-only scholarships, awards, workshops, and camps at more than two dozen universities. Many of these programs are focused on STEM fields. A closer look, still ahead this hour on Here and Now. Supporting WHYY, Drexel University. Are you interested in losing weight? Also experience binge eating, emotional eating, or out of control eating. Researchers at the Well Center at Drexel University are recruiting adults for a clinical trial designed to help individuals both lose weight and reduce problematic eating behaviors. Learn more by email at edresearch at drexel.edu or online at the Drexel Well Center website. Funding for Here and Now comes from the listeners of WBUR Boston and MathWorks, creators of MATLAB and Simulink software for technical computing and model-based design. MathWorks, accelerating the pace of discovery in engineering and science. Learn more at MathWorks.com. And Reddit and WBUR presenting Endless Thread, the podcast that brings stories discovered on Reddit to listeners' earbuds. Each week, tales that range from the elementary schoolyard to science labs on spool on Endless Thread, available on Apple Podcasts. From NPR and WBUR, I'm Peter O'Dowd. This is Here and Now. Investors are reacting today to another recent headline about General Electric. Fitch Ratings, which monitors the credit health of companies, said that GE's reserves for its long-term healthcare business are below average. This appears to mirror a concern raised last week by Harry Markopoulos. You might remember Markopoulos as the Bernie Madoff whistleblower. He said that GE is a bigger fraud than Enron. Let's bring in Robin Farzad, host of Public Radio's Full Disclosure. Hi, Robin. Hello, Peter. And we reported on Markopoulos' warning last week, but now... Fitch is calling GE's insurance business risky. Uh, what is Fitch looking at and why, what are they concerned about? Yes, long-term care coverage, which uh, just a refresher pays for assisted living in nursing homes. That turned out to be just so much more expensive to pay out than what these insurers imagined when they wrote the policy, say, 20 or 25 years ago. And when you're GE and you have to set aside billions to replenish your rainy day reserves, that's
Is there anything more to be Matching homeowners with home improvement professionals for a variety of home projects. From minor repairs to major remodels. Homeowners can read reviews of local pros and book appointments online at HomeAdvisor.com. And NPR and Morning Edition on this station tomorrow morning. What happened while you were sleeping and the news, interviews, and analysis for the day ahead. National, international, and local news tomorrow on Morning Edition. It's here now. We've been hearing for years now about college programs aimed at getting women into STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, fields where women are traditionally underrepresented. Well, now the Trump administration has opened investigations into female-only scholarships, awards, workshops, and camps at more than two dozen universities, including the University of California, Berkeley, Princeton, and Rice University in Houston. Some professors have filed complaints that by offering these special programs to women without offering equivalent programs to men, these universities are violating Title IX. To understand more about how all of this applies to these cases, Title IX, we're joined by Erin Bazubis. She's a Title IX expert and law professor at Western New England University. Erin, welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, first I want to talk about what kinds of scholarships we're talking about. Schools themselves, from our understanding, aren't allowed to fund single-sex scholarships under Title IX. 
That's right. There is a particular regulatory provision in the regulations that uh, implement and enforce Title IX that talks about financial assistance. And the general rule um, is that schools have to make financial aid and scholarships uh, available to students uh, open with regard to sex. There is, though, an exception for financial aid that is, quote, established by certain wills, trusts, and bequests. So I think what's anticipated there is that you might have, say, a wealthy alum who in their will leaves money to uh, support a named scholarship, and it might be, for example, to support women's access into STEM fields or, you know, or something else. Um, and to allow for that to happen, the regulations say that that's okay, as long as the overall effect of any sex-restricted scholarships does not discriminate on the basis of sex. Okay, okay. And can you explain that overall effect? That's an interesting phrasing. Well, I would if I could. It's not, it's not entirely clear from the text of the regulation. You know, I think that one way to be on the safe side, you know, I think that if you were talking to university council who were looking at this, they would say, you know, it, it certainly can't be the case that you're discriminating on the basis of sex overall if you have an equal number of money that's restricted for each sex. So if you had a certain, you know, $1,000 scholarship that only women could apply for, if you had the equivalent for men, that would pretty clearly be okay. I think that that's not necessarily the only thing that makes uh, scholarship programs non-discriminatory overall. Uh, maybe you look at just the sex of the people who have received scholarships in a given year, um, and if you add them all up, and some of them are sex restricted and some of them are not, but overall you're not favoring one sex or the other in the effective distribution of your scholarships, that could be okay too. I think it'll be interesting to see what OCR does with this investigation because it may offer some clarity on this point. Okay, let's talk about outcomes for a moment. We know that women earn about half of all science and engineering bachelor's degrees right now, but they're still underrepresented very severely in some of these fields. I'm wondering what the title of an argument based on these eventual outcomes for women. You know, in terms of just a strictly legal question, Title IX doesn't require any sort of equity in the outcomes of certain degrees. Um, the statute is generally written to prohibit discrimination, to prohibit schools from treating students differently on the basis of sex. I mean, historically, the statute was aimed at admissions caps and quotas that were actually commonplace in the 60s and 70s that would say, oh, you know, we can't have more than 20% female entering class of our law school, for example. Uh, so really the statute was meant to take sex out of the equation entirely. There are some exceptions made in the regulations where it is okay to treat students differently on the basis of sex. And that's what allows for things like sex segregated athletic programs, dormitories, bathrooms, in K through 12, there's some allowances for single sex education under some narrow circumstances, but there's not any sort of general mandate that we have to equalize either admissions or outcomes in particular academic fields. Uh, that said, the spirit of Title IX is trying to reduce barriers to education that have existed on the basis of sex. There is a general regulations that permits affirmative action that permits schools to address historical and continuing disparities. So I think there's an argument to be made in the spirit of the statute that it's appropriate for schools to look at disciplines and occupations where uh, women are underrepresented and to try to find uh, ways to help reduce those barriers. Uh, I would also say that it should be fair game for colleges and universities to do that for, for men as well. Mm. And I think that anyone who's interested in the kinds of gender stereotypes that hold women back mm -hmm. would like to see that effort made at uh, enticing men into some of the fields that are traditionally dominated by women. That's an interesting point. I, I'm curious what, what fields those are where we're seeing an underrepresented uh, percentage of men. Well, education, uh, for mm -hmm. example, nursing, mm -hmm. yeah. caretaking fields like that, but also things like uh, public administration might be another. And I, and I think it's going to differ depending on location. It's going to differ depending on what particular aspect of the field that you're talking about. Even when we're talking about STEM, you could find some numbers, and I've heard the complainants that led to this investigation, they cite data that says that women are entering STEM uh, graduate programs in equal numbers as, as men. And that's true in the aggregate, but not when you drill down into specific STEM 
fields like engineering, you know, information technology, right? You can definitely find pockets of deep, deep gender segregation within STEM, even though in the aggregate it doesn't look that way because STEM also includes there. like biology, yeah. for example, mm -hmm. which is.